Hmm. Do you know what time it is, Mr. Cow? It's time for a channel review. This time, a gaming channel. Run the intro. All right, welcome to another paid channel review. It's been a while, but I'm back. Uh, and so, yeah, I was contacted by a gaming channel that wanted me to take a look at their channel. And so here I am. This is, I should mention, a paid channel review. So basically for the cost of a couple of Big Mac combos, you can get a channel review like the one you're about to see, which will be about 45 minutes to an hour worth of in-depth channel analysis and concrete action items and suggestions for how to improve the channel to help it grow. And sometimes with these channel reviews, we get special focus areas, special requests, so help me get subscribers or views or something like that. This is actually a wide open one. I haven't been given a specific area of focus, which is kind of nice, so I'm just gonna talk about whatever makes sense to me. And um, yeah, so we're gonna get into it. It's gonna be a gaming channel, and so uh, the gaming niche does have some unique challenges. Over a third of all videos on YouTube are gaming. And so as a result, it's uh, often called over saturated, which I'm not sure that that's the right term, but it is definitely very competitive. Uh, so we're going to do that. And if you are interested in getting a paid channel review like this one, you can message me through the Small YouTubers Boost account on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Any of those places is fantastic. And we can figure out a time, a price, whatever we need to do. So let's get right into it and check out this channel. So before I actually start the review, I just want to point out a couple of things that you might notice are going to be a little bit different on my screen here than on your screen potentially. For one thing, I'm operating on dark mode, which I prefer. It's a little easier on the eyes, and it's a little better on uh, power efficiency. So a little better for the environment there, and a little easier on the batteries as well, although I'm on a desktop right now. I am using Firefox as my web browser, so it might look a little different if you're using Chrome or Edge. As well, I have YouTube Premium, so I can avoid ads, which is nice. And lastly, I have the TubeBuddy browser browser plugin installed and I have a legend level account. I'm going to be using a lot of those tools in this review, I'm certain. I use them every single day, I use them in every single review. So if you're interested in getting TubeBuddy, there is an affiliate link down below and you can install the browser plugin and then you can get the interface like what I have. There's a lot of free functions which is similar to what I'm using uh, and then there are the paid tiers where you get enhanced functions beyond that. Really fancy things like A-B testing and stuff like that. Click magnet which I'm a big fan of. Uh, so I just want to get that out of the way before I start the clock. I want to make sure that we give the channel its full 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, so with that, I'm going to start the clock and get into it. So the channel we're checking out today is called Out of the Hat Gaming. And I like to start by searching for the channel. I was provided the channel link just to make sure I get the right channel, but I like searching for it to see about the searchability of the channel name and see how it appears in search results. So let's take a look here. The keyword score for this channel name is actually an excellent. It's a 91 out of 100. Uh, that's really good. That means the search volume is good, but the competition is really low. So you see on the Search Explorer, this is the Videolytics browser plugin of TubeBuddy I'm using, you'll see that under search volume, the arrow is right in the middle which means that there's a decent search volume, believe it or not, for the, for the term I just searched. Um, but it's in the green, in excellent in competition, which actually means there's very little competition. Sometimes that can be a little confusing because it's going this way and you think that, that means more, but it's actually, it, it means less. So that's actually a pretty good combination. So it's a pretty good channel name. Looking at the channel icon here, the profile picture, it looks pretty good. I don't have a lot of criticism. It's very clearly about gaming and it's got a top hat. Hey, how about that? <laughs> I figure I'll go along with it. I've got my top hat on. Okay, so it's got a top hat. Um, and so from a design perspective, in terms of the logo that I'm looking at, it's really good. It pops, it's noteworthy, it's clearly a hat with a game controller coming out of it. So it's clearly a gaming channel. Um, it does appear to be on some sort of a platform. Uh, that gray line at the bottom, I think, could be removed just to clean the image up, make it a little bit crisper, because uh, I'm wondering, like, okay, is it on a table? If so, it's only kind of resting on a table. Uh, and so I don't know what's sort of happening in that lower 10% of the profile picture. So to clean that up, I would recommend removing the gray line. Uh, it's also got a nice white stroke around it to make sure that the image pops. And looking a bit more carefully, 
I think the white stroke itself also has a black stroke outside of it, which might be a bit much, but I mean, it looks reasonably good. I'm not sure that it scales great, but one thing I think we really should acknowledge is the fact that I searched the channel name and this channel came up first, so it's definitely unique enough. Uh, and so it has 1,350 subscribers, which is pretty good. It's already reached the subscriber threshold for monetization without the short path, which is a new thing that's coming. Uh, and it says, welcome to the worst YouTube channel you'll ever encounter. I make dumb jokes, late guides, and walkthroughs, pointless. And so that's kind of interesting. He's got a sense of self-deprecation and a sense of humor, which I appreciate. Because normally I'm like, you. if you watch these channel reviews before, you know I'm going to jump on, oh, welcome to. Um, but... This case, it's kind of leaning into that trope where normally I talk about how the first few characters in your channel description is absolutely critical, but here I think he's used it very effectively to, to be funny. And I think that in a very crowded, competitive marketplace of gaming, I think doing something like that is actually a very bold choice. So I actually don't have a lot of uh, feedback here for the channel description. Just looking at the common video tags, I'm seeing live stream, Twitch, twitch.tv, live, archive, stream, hat films, hat films, one word, uh, GTA Online, The Last of Us, and HBO Max. So I'm wondering how many of those tags are accurate for what we're about to see. I think live stream, Twitch, twitch.tv, um, I don't think those are great tags if that's something this channel is using because if you want to watch Twitch, you'd go watch Twitch. And if you want to watch Twitch highlights, I don't think that's what this channel is about. And so I don't know, like if you're just reposting things that you did on Twitch or what have you, I don't know that that's a very effective tag because it's also going to be very competitive. Um, maybe do live streaming. I'm not sure. We'll take a look. I think Hat Films is probably just a disconnect there on the name. So there's that. Um... And I think that uh, the, the tags don't get really relevant until the latter portion there, which is GTA Online and The Last of Us. So I'm going to suspect that those are the two games that uh, maybe this channel plays most often. Just looking here, I see that the two top video results are from this channel. So that's good as well. So this person has done a very good job of locking down their channel name and the SEO around it. So kudos to you there. Um, but it is worth noting that 26 views from a video five days ago, 18 views from a video two days ago, those numbers are, uh, you know, a, a little uh, on the low side uh, for a channel with this many subscribers, I would say. Now, I always caution people against a subscriber to view ratio comparison. Uh, but in this case, it's just the, the dichotomy is the, the, the breadth between the two numbers is so it's, it's a chasm. <laughs> the chasm between the view count on recent videos and the subscriber count makes me think that there's some challenges happening here. Looking at the thumbnails, I have to say that the thumbnails don't look great for a couple of reasons. And so just in advance, I'm going to say that I'm going to be pretty blunt here to make good use of the time. Uh, and so uh, if I unintentionally hurt some feelings, that's not my intent. I'm trying to say these things to help find areas of improvement and places to grow. But if I just come here and say you're doing a good job at everything, I'm not going to give you or anyone else watching a whole lot of value. So I apologize in advance if I'm a little harsh. Um, but these thumbnails, the second one is the one I want to talk about first because that is super generic. You see thumbnails like this all over um, uh, YouTube. And so it looks like, you know, a, a screenshot from the game, maybe after a match. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily play uh, GTA, but I, I play Smash. And so like at the end of Smash, uh, you know, the winner's there, you know, um, celebrating and the other people are sort of clapping. And it looks like it's like a still frame from that. Or it could just be from a promotional image or maybe a load screen. I don't know. But it's clearly just something from the game. Uh, and so it doesn't bring anything unique to it. It says event week, new rail gun. The text could be useful. I'm not in GTA Online, so I'm not sure what the interests of that audience would be. Um, but I'm thinking that that image, it just... I don't think it's going to stand out in a crowd is part of my concern. So one thing I would strongly recommend doing just generally for everyone every now and then I do this from time to time is go look at your videos in analytics and sort them by the CTR, the click through rate and see which of your videos have thumbnails are getting a lot of clicks and also export that data to Excel and go look at what's on the bottom in YouTube studio, you can't go very deep, but if you export it to Excel, you get, I think, 500 results. And so knowing what your 500th best performing thumbnail is, to basically call it the worst performing, depending on how many videos you have out, I mean, you might not have that many, but to see your worst performing and your best performing can give you a really good idea of what your audience responds to. 
Now, this first thumbnail here is, there's a lot going on, and I sadly don't mean that in a good way. There's a lot of issues. So it looks like there's a logo of uh, somebody H great, less than or equal to Zemate T, I don't know, Has Hazmat is probably what that name is. I don't know. Um, so it looks like it's some other channel's logo is what it looks like to me, but I don't know. Again, this isn't the space I operate in, which can be good and could be bad because I'm kind of a lay person giving you that perspective. Um, but that's kind of odd. So it looks like maybe this is something from some other channel or a video about some other player. Uh, and it says uh, has mates. I'm going to say hazmat because it just sounds easier to say. First casino heist with Outcast 2020. Now again, I don't know what any of that means. There's also a live thing there. Uh, there's a live logo. Um, and the thing is the text is blending into the background quite a bit in the left hand side of it under the bottom left corner of the H you've got green on green they're different greens but it's still not great you've got a slight drop shadow but I don't think it's enough one thing that I've been trending to on my primary channel Vacation Impossible is I've been using uh, stroke outlines a lot more I used to really lean on uh, drop shadows but it's really they don't show up great when they are compressed and when they're on a really small screen like mobile so I'm leaning more towards having a stroke outline, a black stroke, thickness of five to 10 points if you're doing it in Photoshop, tends to look pretty good and really helps the text pop better than just a drop shadow. Um, and so I don't know exactly what this is referring to. I don't know what game this is. And again, I'm just looking at the images. I haven't looked, looked at the titles yet. Um, but that's the thing is the thumbnail should stand on its own, separate from the title. People say, oh, the title explains everything. Um, and the title has its purpose to serve, but the thumbnail needs to give some information and entice someone. And so if I don't know who Hazmat is, if I don't know what Casino Heist game this is referring to, is this a GTA thing? I don't know. Um, and what, I don't know what Outcast 2020 is. So, I mean, from my point of view... Uh, as a layperson, it's not really speaking to me. The live logo is difficult to see. It's white on gray. Uh, I don't know if it's intended that this was live. I don't think it was live uh, from the other things that I'm seeing here. Uh, and so, and also what's the value of it being live? If the fact that it was live is accurate, that's one thing, but if it doesn't entice your audience, if it doesn't add additional value, if people aren't clamoring for live content or content that was like live to tape or whatever, like why include it? And so, um, you know, people spend, you can spend a lot of time on their thumbnails, and I think they should, and I should probably spend more myself. But I think that, you know, thinking about all that kind of stuff to that minutia, uh, it's a good thing to do. Um, a couple positive things about these thumbnails. There's nothing critical where the time code is. So that bottom right-hand corner, you're not putting anything important there. Excellent, that's good. And the font choice you're using is very good. This is scalable, block, thick, easy to read. So your font choice and some of your element placement, that's really solid. I'm just thinking of making the, the, the text pop against the background and make it really clear what the enticement of the video is. So now I'm just going to take a look at the titles. So for the first one, um, yeah, it's uh, Hazmates, Hazmats, first Diamond Casino Heist. Is this not the worst way of doing this? And so that's interesting um, way of putting it. Um, and so if this was the worst way of doing something, uh, maybe putting the word fail on the image somewhere, uh, perhaps where live is and a little bit bigger, easier to read. Uh, the fact that this is like, it sounds like it was really like not good. Uh, and so highlighting that, like, why am I clicking on this visually and like fail in red text because red can really pop, for example, might not be a bad idea. At least then I would have a little bit more idea of what it's about. It seems like there's a lot of barriers to entry on this video. I need to somehow know what game this is. Maybe the game is called Casino Heist. I don't know. And if it is, you kind of ignore that part of it. Um, but I need to know the game and I clearly need to know who this has Matt has mate person is why that's important um and all of that and so like that's kind of tricky but one thing that i could instantly understand is if there was that word fail there in red it would pop it would capture my eye and i would like oh this is a video about someone doing poorly at something and then i think okay it's their first heist so maybe this was like an excellent gamer and this was like the first time they ever played the game so it was before they got excellent and that might be good to watch that could be kind of interesting uh, and so let's even glance here at the second one. The Railgun is now available in GTA, on, uh, GTA Online and more this week. So it seems like there's a couple of things going on in this video. And it's only a 3 minute and 19 second video, but it sounds like it's going to cover multiple topics. And I would say that as much as possible for SEO optimization uh, to narrow the focus. So if this is just about the Railgun now being available in GTA Online, just make it about that. 
um, and you know, featuring this other channel, and it sounds like it's a music channel, so I don't know that that adds value from the gaming dimension. If it is a collab and putting their name in the title is part of the agreement, obviously don't change that. It, like you still want to live up to the agreement, um, but I'm wondering how much uh, SEO value that's adding to the searchability of the title, as well as is it an entice? Is it enticing people? So. If I wanted to tighten up this title, it would be Railgun, now available in GTA Online. Um, and then maybe checking, um, like here, let's actually do this live. I'm gonna go into my Keyword Explorer here using the TubeBuddy browser ex extension. How to get Railgun. And look, I'm getting an autocomplete, GTA 5 Online. So is this a good tag? You could also put that in the title if you show them. It's only fair. Of course, that's weighted for my channel. Let's look unweighted. There we go. Because I'm a travel channel. I'm logged in as my travel channel. It wouldn't make any sense. But for a generic channel, it's actually really good. How to get the railgun in GTA 5 online. So if you talk about how to get it in the video, then I would add how to get the railgun GTA 5 online to the title. So it'd be like Railgun now available on GTA Online and then like a little dash or something like you've done in the other title and then say, and then, you know, how to get the Railgun in GTA Online. And that's really searchable. Um, so let's take a look here at the descriptions as they show here. Um, so last week, my friend Hazmate and I tackled Hazmate's first Diamond Casino heist. He was a little late and the did not go. So, I mean, there's a grammar thing, I think, and then did not go where you needed to go or it did not go well or whatever. So like tighten up the grammar a little bit. Um, I think there's like the space after and before or after the three dots is a little unnecessary. I'm a little picky there, but the, the first two lines of your description are so critical and the more useful information you can pack in there, the better for how it shows in search results. Um, so it sounds like it's just your friend, um, which is fine. But that's not going to draw in a new audience. And so it's worth remembering that your thumbnail, your title, and the first two lines of the description of a video are not for your fans. They are for total strangers who stumble across your content. After those first two lines of the description, yeah, sure, start speaking as if you're speaking to your fans. That's fine. But you're trying to entice new people with this, and that should be your focus. Uh, and so also... You want to make evergreen content as much as possible on YouTube. So starting off with so last week, I mean, I'm really bad with the word so. That's my um. It's a verbal crutch. If you're playing at home, do not turn this into a drinking game where you drink every time I say so, unless you're drinking water. Otherwise, you will die of alcohol poisoning. I don't want that to happen. Um, and as a result, and I use an um, as a result... I don't uh, think that the word so has much value. I've spent so much time editing the word so out of my spoken word in videos uh, that I know that it is verbal filler. It has no SEO value. It doesn't communicate information. It's a verbal crutch. And so sometimes it's good when you write how you speak, but not when you have those verbal crutches come along for the ride. So I would take out last week because you want to make this evergreen. It doesn't matter when it happened necessarily. And so it just means nothing. So you could begin with my friend has met and I tackled but the fact that he's your friend, is that super important to a look-in audience? I don't know. You could just say, has Matt and I tackled his very first Diamond Casino heist? Um, you know, and, and then go immediately from there. He was a little late. Like, was he late to show up in, like, the match and you're just waiting for him? And is that in the video? If no, That's not very entertaining. If it was, like, he's late to the game because maybe the game's popular for a while and he's late to getting to it, then say that a little bit more explicitly uh, or what whatever it is. Uh, I think enticing a little bit, hinting a little bit at what went wrong uh, could, you know, entice somebody to click on it. And the second one here, it starts off with edit asterisks. You don't need to tell people if you edit the description. I, I don't think that's necessary. I uh, appreciate the fact that you want to be really straightforward and transparent with people. But again, those first two lines, not for your existing audience. Those are for new people. So if you really want to mention that you've edited the description, add it beyond the second line. Maybe say something there like, oh, uh, this description was edited on this date or something like to that effect. If you really want to include it, even then, I don't know that it's worth doing. One thing we forgot to mention is that the bunker and all bunker modifications and upgrades are 30% off as well. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, you could drop off one thing and just begin this description with, we forgot to mention that the bunker and all, mo all bunker modification upgrades are 30% off. 
and then go from there. It also looks like you cut immediately to um, Ben's links. I think you're going to want to have a little meatier description before you start putting links in there, uh, unless, again, it was part of a collab agreement. So, um, all right, we're going to dive into the actual channel now. Uh, this hat is really hot, so I'm going to go ahead and take the hat off to continue, but let's say I'm wearing the top hat in solidarity with Out of the Hat Gaming. And so we've got a channel trailer. It auto plays. It's less than 90 seconds long, so that's pretty good. Um, what does Out of the Hat Gaming have to offer? That's a pretty good question. Um, and, it, you know, it could be a little tightened up. I think it could be what does Out of the Hat Gaming offer? Uh, I don't know. Uh, channel trailers um, often don't perform great, but there's still videos in their own right, and so you still want to consider SEO. So, for example, your description here looks like it's exclusively links. Twitter, Discord, TikTok, and Patreon. And so you're going to want to, at the very least, very minimum, and you should do this every single time, is copy the title of your video in the description. Just copy and paste that sucker, and then go on to a few, minimum, I would say two, free-flowing sentences where you just talk about the video. It, you know, it's great if you can include keywords in SEO, but, um, you know... If you're just starting out in doing that aspect of it, you don't need to worry about it. Don't let it bog you down. Don't let it feel like it's tons of work because if it's like that, then you might not do it. Uh, and so just, it's like stream of consciousness. Just think, what's cool about this video? What's this video about? What can I say about this video? Maybe what themes in the video can I expand upon? Whatever. The more you write, the better. You got 5,000 characters in the description and the longer that is, the more you're giving not just YouTube, but search engines like Google, DuckDuckGo, Bing, Yahoo, you name it, they're still out there. There's still some traffic, uh, particularly, obviously, uh, with uh, with Google in particular. Um, and so not just YouTube, but those search engines want that information. They, they, they gobble it up and they figure out what your video is about. And if that video is not there, they kind of just give up on you. Uh, and so that's not great. And so I know you're doing a better job in your videos of having some description because we were looking at those previews before, but you want to do it consistently. You know, people say that consistency is the key to YouTube, and that can mean a lot of different things. Some people think it means uploading every single day, which it absolutely does not. Uh, that's good if you can. Don't go more than once a day. It looks like you're doing about twice a week, which is pretty good. I also noticed the channel trailer is about 10 days old, so it looks fairly new. Um, and so you're going to want it to be just naturally part of your process whenever you put out a video. Copy the title into the description, as well as a couple, minimum two sentences, talking and describing the video, talking about what the video is about. Uh, so that is that there. Um, and so let's look at the banner here. Banner's pretty good. Looks very GTA. Um, yeah, GTA 5. So that's good. It's very consistent in that. Uh, the text pops great. Uh, the images pop really well against that background. I think this is a really solid banner. Now I see that um, the line under the top hat uh, uh, is a magic wand. And I wanted to talk about that actually for a second before I go too deep into the channel, because um, let's talk competitive advantage. This is something that is either unique or that you're particularly strong in that your competition doesn't have. And so what makes you new? And what makes you unique? I noticed that in that video, it does appear that you're wearing a hat. looks like a ball cap. Uh, so maybe that's part of your persona you're always wearing a cap, a hat of some kind. I don't know. But the fact that it's like a magician's top hat and a magic wand really tells me that, like, what I would hope, what I would dream, what I would wish for you is that you do magic tricks. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, I think that that would be really unique bit, a, a unique characterization, uh, shtick, whatever you want to call it. But if you even did very simple magic tricks as part of the character of who you are in the videos, that would be great. Just quick cutaways to like a physical trick. And you know what? You don't even have to be good at it. Maybe the shtick is that you imagine yourself to be this great magician and you're horrible at it. And so you do cutaways where you try some magic trick and it goes horribly, hilariously wrong. And that could really work to keep the audience engaged and be entertained. And that's the kind of thing, like, I don't watch a lot of gaming content. I watch Cinemassacre, I watch Pat the NES Punk, and I sometimes Scott the Waz, and that's about it for me. Um, also Achilles Melee, but that's just because I know the guy. <laughs> um, but he's good too, so, like, check all of those out. Um, but 
I think that if you had some gimmick is a, maybe a negative word, but it, it, you know, it's unique appeal, personality, whatever you want to call it. If that's something that you do, let me know because I would watch that. I would want to check that out. And so, and if it's if it's like interspersed with the videos and the videos aren't super long and stuff, even if it's about a game I don't play, I might enjoy watching that. Alternatively, it could be that maybe you're a magician at gaming and so you've got the skills and maybe that's part of what it is. Um, but I really think that there's a great opportunity here with the name that you've chosen and the, the image that you have for your profile to really build a personality out of that that will help you stand out in a very crowded room. Uh, and so I don't know if you're doing any of that already or if you've ever thought about it or not. Feel free, of course, to take any of the suggestions I'm making. Uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to give credit, although I'll take it. <laughs> Just remember me when you're remember me when you're famous is the line I usually use. Um, but I think that there's a real opportunity there. So I'm thinking for um, your profile picture, because I didn't understand the magic wand. One thing you could do is put the wand behind the hat and that would be a little bit more apparent. Otherwise, I would lose the wand. Uh, but again, is it part of the personality? If it's just a name you came up with that sounds kind of cool, um, then, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're doing magic tricks, put the wand behind the hat. Yes, a layer behind the hat. And I think that would help bring that point forward and be recognizable. But I think that your, your banner is pretty good. I noticed that the link you have here is only Patreon, which, a little tricky. Um, let's actually check that link. Just, okay, so your Patreon's higher than mine. <laughs> I have a $1 and a $3 level on mine. Um, and you have zero patrons. And so, um, you know, I'm not going to like dunk on you for that or anything. Um, I'm just going to say that uh, I think having two tiers would be a good idea. So I think having maybe a lower tier, a $1 tier. I have one in three. I think if you have one in five, that might be good. Um Let's see. I would like to make this a full-time job for me and my family, so please support me any way possible. Anything helps. Thank you so much. And it looks like you're using a full name here. If that's your real name, I would think about whether you want your real full name out there. If it's a pseudonym, cool. Um, but you might want to just, uh, instead of calling yourself, you know, Anthony Brown, maybe just call yourself, um, you know, Out of the Hat Gaming, if you're able to change that name. Okay, so a couple things about this Patreon here. Now, I'm not a giant success on Patreon or anything, um, but, you know, I know a little bit about it. And so I do have some thoughts about how Patreon might work a little bit better for you. Um, now, that $5 might be converting to Canadian on me. So it might actually be three or something like that. But I would have, like, you know, a $1 level for someone to just throw money at you and be a supporter uh, and maybe get access to some things. Uh, and then maybe at the five, the 3 to $5, uh, you know, with currency conversion, whatever, um, that might be, like, a little bit more exclusive content. But uh, I think it's interesting it says I would like to make this my full-time job for me and my family support me anyway anything helps etc thank you so much that isn't giving anyone a reason to do it other than generosity and generosity I think is generally better you know focused towards charities and things like that rather than creators I mean that haven't been said if you want to go support me on patreon vacation possible go do it um, but uh, I think that it's about providing value and so you need to give someone a reason to do it other than maybe they have some warm and fuzzy feelings that they kind of generate themselves from supporting a creator that they like. Uh, so if you have some exclusive content that you can put behind this paywall, I mean, it, if someone comes here, it doesn't look like there's any posts. Uh, and so I could see this and I'd be like, I'd give you $5 a month. I would get nothing. I mean, it says here, Patreon only updates chat community excuse, exclusive lens access. But as I scroll down, uh, I'm not seeing that there's any posts for me to see. There was one post in July of 2021. It was an intro and I can read the whole thing. So it's not actually, you know, pay gated. Um, so I think that if you can post maybe behind the scenes pictures uh, or blog posts, if you're feeling particularly excited about something or frustrated about something or whatever, this can be a nice outlet uh, that isn't subject to ridicule. That's how I use my Patreon. I use my Patreon at the $1 level to talk about stuff that's just kind of going on um, that, or, or maybe share jokes that are a little off color, uh, things that, you know, I don't know, might get me canceled, um, whatever, uh, where I know that the people reading it are my supporters. And so it's a safer space where I can take greater risks and I can I norm, normally do that with pictures and with text uh, so it's like blog posts and, and behind the scenes pictures or whatever like you know I was trying to take a picture for for something and failed at it and you know here's here's me making a funny face something like that um, and then at my higher tier level uh, what I use it for is getting even more personal than that so even at my one dollar level you get access to most of my patreon stuff and at the at the higher level um, you know sometimes they say oh it's really good um, advice to write a letter and not send it 
And that's sort of where I'll do stuff like that. And so that's like my deeper, more personal thoughts that people are probably less interested in. Um, and that's a little bit more pay gated behind a dollar, uh, a higher dollar figure. And so if somebody were that interested in me, my, you know, my innermost darkest feelings, whatever, then they can go and find that. Uh, and so I can understand why having no Patreon supporters, uh, you feel like, why would I bother posting? And I can appreciate that. But at the same time, when someone comes to think about becoming a supporter, they see that they're not getting anything from it. And so what what I would suggest is post at least once a month on Patreon. Even if it's just a picture, a quick text thing, make sure that you uh, select so that it's only visible to the patrons and Patreon will blur the image or, you know, only show the first couple lines of a blog post. So it will entice people, but then they can see that there's content there waiting for them. And then you can talk a little bit more about what they get. What do they get by being a Patreon supporter? Now, it might seem weird for me to be spending even this much time talking about it in a channel review, but the reason for that is that it is so prominently on your channel. It is in, it's visible on your channel trailer description and it is the one link in your banner. And so someone can come here and see the, okay, you've got 1,350 subscribers, you got some videos and stuff, nice banner, check the Patreon, no Patreon supporters. That can evoke some thoughts in an audience where they're like, what's this person in it for? It looks like they're here to make money. It looks like this is e-begging, someone who is very harsh might say. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it could be perceived that way by people. And so having that as your sole link there, I don't know. I mean, we know you're on Twitter, Discord, and TikTok. Which of those have a following? And maybe add those links. You do that by going to your channel description. And that's the links here. Uh, so, you know, you obviously know how to do it because you added Patreon. But you might want to go in and add more and then sort them by where you have the greater following. I think that might be a good idea because where the greater following is, you're probably giving the greater value and that can be helpful. Additionally, when some of those other platforms go around and look at possibly giving verification check marks. Now, with YouTube and Twitter, it's a little weird. Elon Musk took over Twitter and now charges for that. So that's a whole other thing. Um, and and YouTube's got its requirements of subscribers and things. But on other platforms uh, like Instagram, things like that, they will check you out on other social media platforms, on their competition potentially. And if you have a consistent look and name and content type, then you're more likely to get that verification check mark. And so that's one more reason to have everything kind of cross-linking back and forth and having some consistent look. Um, and since we're on the channel description about page, let's take a look at it. Uh, so you're in the United States. Your email address is there, but obscured, which is exactly how you want to do it. That way you can get the real sponsorships or perhaps uh, collaboration opportunities, whatever, maybe fan mail, but not so much the spam bots. So that's good. Let's see. What's this full description? I make dumb jokes, late guides, uh, and walkthroughs, pointless challenges, and I get killed a lot. But I have a good time while doing it, and I meet a lot of amazing people, so maybe this channel is bad, but maybe it's the kind of bad you'd like. That's cute. I think we can tweak it a little. Um, for one thing, the word killed could be a little dicey. I understand that it's gaming, and like you've got weapons in the banner and stuff. I get that. But at the same time, uh, you know, YouTube or search engines, uh, sometimes that can be a bit of a trigger word to think that this is like a more adult content. And maybe it is, but it also like concerned about advertiser friendliness and things like that. Um, so instead of I get killed a lot, might I suggest and I fail a lot? Um, because I think that that's also got some SEO value to it. Um, but I have a good time. Uh, and, and I think that's pretty good. You could remove the but. Um, I, I've heard it referred to, um, I think it was in Chris Voss's book, I think, um, which is Never Split the Difference. I strongly recommend it if you're doing any kind of negotiating with sponsors or for collabs or just any negotiating. Uh, changed my life by like page two. Uh, so I strongly recommend it. One of the things he says is, but is the great eraser. So I try not to use that word. I'm sure I've already used it a lot more than I should. But yeah. But <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about butts today. No, um, when you say the word but, it's like you just erased everything you said before it because you're contradicting what you just said and you're choosing to finish on the thing that follows the but. So clearly that's more important to you. So I think it's unnecessary. I mean, this isn't a situation where that's bad because it's kind of part of the joke, but it's like, and I fail a lot and I have a great time doing it. Just pivot right to it. You don't even necessarily have to have the butt there. Um, and I meet a lot of amazing people. That's awesome. You know, uh, online community, things like that. Um, maybe this channel is bad, but maybe it's the kind of bad you'd like. Uh, I mean, don't talk yourself down. I know it's a joke and self-deprecating humor. I'm actually big on and I was praising earlier, but I'm worried that this is just getting a little deep. <laughs> um, and so think about bad. What do you, how, how do you think it could be perceived as bad? 
uh, and then maybe use a more detailed word instead of just a generic bad. And I think that might make the joke land a little bit better. Uh, so it's like, um, you know, I might be unskilled, but uh, you know, uh, uh, my fails are hilarious or something. I don't know. And you might want to keep it because you do have the dichotomy of the channel's bad, but it could be the kind of bad you like, or it's like, it's so, so, so bad. It's good. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, I would also really flush this out more. I think you're going to want to add like at least another paragraph or two. And what I would really recommend in terms of, uh, an additional paragraph is talk about why you're on YouTube. Why are you doing what you're doing? Are you trying to create a community? You're trying to entertain people, trying to make it so that uh, people don't feel so bad when they fail. Uh, what is it that drives you to do this? Um, and, you know, if it's money and providing for your family, then how does that, why is it this? There's so many different ways you can make money and provide for your family. Why is it gaming? Why is it this kind of gaming? Why is it this particular game? What is it about that that has... Um, you know, evoked passion in you to spend all this time and frankly, to pay some crazy Canadian to review your channel. You're obviously investing time and money into your channel and something is driving that. What is that? If you can figure out what that is and get it down to kind of like a sentence, your why, and when you share that with people, that's when people start to feel an emotional connection to you where it's more than just a channel I watch or a person I enjoy. It's a cause I believe in because they believe in what I believe. So if I believe that you don't have to be an excellent gamer to still have fun at games, and to share that experience with other people. If that's your message, that's a good one. You can have it. If it's not, you can borrow it. <laughs> you know, free, uh, you know, with my permission. Uh, whatever it is. But that's a cause that someone can get behind, even if they're not the greatest GTA fan or the greatest player themselves. Or maybe they're a great player, but they think that, yeah, they're worried that maybe, you know, by showing off all the time that, you know, by owning noobs, they're getting noobs to give up on the game and they don't want that, uh, potentially. And so I think that having a why that speaks to a value of some kind. And so if, if, if none of that's making sense and you're like, what is this guy talking about? I just play video games on the internet. Like, calm down, Ray. Uh, I can appreciate that. But again, check out Simon Sinek. I'll have a link for, for the book in the description. If you don't want to pick up the book, go check out his TED Talk about the Golden Circle uh, and why and all of that. And um, I, for me, when I watched it, I had to keep pausing the video to go update my channel description when I went through that process. So if you haven't encountered that, I really recommend checking it out uh, because when you start to have that emotional connection with your audience and they realize that you have shared values then and, and you have a cause of some kind, whatever it is, they want to get behind you, that's when they're more likely to click on that Patreon and, and then actually support you on Patreon. That's when you start getting those true fans. And you know, you want to talk about making a living out of YouTube. There's the true fan theory, which is if you have a thousand people who are true fans and a true fan watches every video you put out and buys everything you try to sell, basically. If you can figure out a way to make $100 off of uh, your true fans every year, then you now have a $100,000 a year job uh, out of your passion, your hobby, whatever it is. Uh, and so getting those true fans and having that deeper connection, this is one of those paths to creating true fans. And so my Patreon supporters, you know, there used to be two, now there's one, but they're true fans. Um, and so I hope to, of course, grow that one day. Those numbers are small and unimpressive. I don't focus on Patreon. It is not, uh, prominently displayed on my channel. I created it at the request of my, one of my true fans, ironically, one who's no longer, uh, supporting me, but that's totally fine. It was great while well, it lasted. Uh, and the, he still supports me in other ways by, you know, commenting on videos and things. So, uh, and John, if you're watching, Hey, sorry, shave the beard. <laughs> <laughs> not to out you or anything. Uh, most people probably know what I'm talking about. But anyways, uh, it's all in good fun. Uh, and but, but seriously, like having those things uh, are why people will remember you. Because a lot of people rely on the YouTube algorithm for views and success. And it works for some, but it can sometimes feel like, you know, you're relying on the weather or night and day. It's like, you know, the algorithm fell out of love with me or something. And so the thing is, is that like, Recommended videos, for example, are largely based on the last hundred videos a person watched. So let's say they love your stuff and they're watching it, whatever, and then they stumble across and go down a crazy rabbit hole. And they watch 100 cat videos or 100 live PD videos, uh, you know, court cam. I've been watching stuff like that. They go watch 100 people's court episodes or they come watch 100 uh, videos from uh, Vacation Impossible, maybe. And so after it's been 100 videos since they've watched you, you're not going to be coming up and recommended practically at all. That's the primary driver of recommended. And so what's going to bring them back? I go back to 
Cinemassacre because I remember and I have passion for uh, his content. He, you know, he 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 plucks that uh, that string of nostalgia. But I also really respect him as a content creator. I find him hilarious and I find it fascinating when he talks about behind the scenes stuff. I've met him in person. He's a really nice dude. And so, like for a lot of those sorts of things, I feel that slightly deeper connection. Uh, Pat Contry, he kind of uh, he fights for kind of like the 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 little guy in the retro gaming community. So that he he gets upset when they get scammed and he does reviews about like games you might not have known. Or or even that you did, but it's all, it's all very funny. Uh, and he's very passionate about it. And so I identify with that. I share some of those values. And so even if I haven't watched one of his videos in a while, I will myself remember that. Be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that guy is awesome. I got to go check out one of his videos. And so that, even though I'm a subscriber, that's what it takes to bring me back and start seeing those things come up and recommend it. You know, if a global event of some kind comes along and people watch 100 news videos because they're trying to be informed about a global event, I couldn't imagine what, uh, and then all of a sudden uh the stuff they used to watch prior to the global event drops off their recommended uh and so then they might at some point be like okay i'm sick of the news i i i i know what i need to know i've got the information now now i just want to be entertained all my recommendations is news uh okay i'm going to go search out this thing i used to watch who are they going to remember how can we make it you and if it's because you've got values that they identify with and you've got something funny you do like maybe magic tricks well or poorly um you know, that can be uh, one of the ways that that happens. And so like, yeah, you can you can hack the algorithm and you can hack SEO. Let's hack people and their hearts and their minds so that they actually, you know, do the work of searching and coming back to you themselves rather than relying on the algorithm that we can't control. We can only try to influence. Uh, so anyways, enough about that. Let's go back to the main page here. Let's take a look at the layout. So this layout is pretty sparse. In fact, if I was to be harsh, uh, you know, I think uh, actually I've got someone who can be who can be harsh. I think uh, he's probably you're weak, dude. Weak layout. Did did you even lay it out? Seriously, like there's nothing. Just videos. Great. No kidding. Videos on YouTube. People know this. Mr. Cow, you're getting close to that line we talked about. I don't care. Guy needs to know this. He did not set up his channel. Well, he, 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 good banner. He's got that good banner, right? Yeah. And nothing to click on. Nothing to watch. Just, yo, oh, I'm too angry. I can't even talk about it. You explain it to him. You, you, you do this crap. I'm out of here. Okay, well, a little cameo from Mr. Cow. People have been asking for him back in the comments, and, uh, you know, uh, he's, uh, <clears throat> and so, he, you know, he's, he's kind of excited about that. I thought you were leaving. Hmm. Just wanted to wave to his supporters, I guess. See what I mean about a gimmick? Little comedy can go a long way. That might not have been funny. Anyways, the point that I was making inelegantly is that you only have two columns here. And so there's a lot of work that can be done here. The good news is, is it's easy and it's largely set it and forget it. So one of the things you're going to want to do is add a column for your most popular videos. So if I were to come here and I wanted to know, what's this guy best at? Now... It might not be a fair assessment because views is not always an indication of quality, but that's the that's the linkage an average audience member would make. So let's just go with that as an assumption. Let's assume I believe views equal quality, uh, which I, I know isn't always the case. Sometimes people hate watch stuff. Sometimes crap gets picked up by the algorithm and stuff. And a lot of times good stuff gets hidden because people don't know SEO and it never gets seen. Uh, but let's say I want to know what is your most popular video? What are you known for? What are you good at? Right? Um, looking here, you know, okay, you got uh, 59 views on that and uh, your shorts, you got 711 there. Okay. When it comes to shorts, I mean, you can get a couple hundred views with uh, kind of luck, just depending on where you're in, uh, when you end up on the short shelf. So, uh, that, so I'm going to check videos, one click, and then I'm going to go to popular, two clicks. And so now with a couple of clicks, I can see your most popular video is I play GTA Online on PS3 in 2021. Cool. Um, if you haven't, may I suggest a follow-up? I think it's time to do it again in 2022. <laughs> um, or, or maybe do PS4 in 2022. I don't know. I mean, that wouldn't be much because, like, that's still pretty mainstream. It hasn't been fully replaced by the 5, I think, because um, people are still, you know, trying to get their hands on 5s. I don't know. I'm not really plugged into the PS uh, uh, scene. I'm more of a retro gamer. But, um, Harvey... <laughs> Firestein. Doesn't look oh up there, that's interesting. Okay, like I would I I would maybe check that out. I don't know that I would check it out for fourteen minutes, uh, so I'm hoping that there's chapters there. Um, but okay, that's actually kind of interesting. I, I might check that out. Um, but again, 
So it looks like you've got sort of a PNG of yourself that you're using as an element, which is cool. Uh, you laughing, assuming that's you. Um, and so you're using that in a couple of the thumbnails here. Everything you need to know about your MC business. And oh my God, red on blue. I don't know what that is. Um, wow. Okay, so that's, that's random. It's off topic for the rest of the channel, and I can appreciate that. Uh, that thumbnail... Um, it's pretty rough. It's hard to read. Uh, and so if you wanted to maybe consider punching up that thumbnail, uh, making it easier to read, I don't know what a MC business is. So making that a little bit more clear. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Um, and so one of the things that I would recommend just talking about thumbnails is, uh, there is something called AB testing that you can do with TubeBuddy. So if you have TubeBuddy, um, then this is great. If not, click the link below, go get TubeBuddy. Uh, even, even if it's just the free version, that's good. But what I'm about to talk about is not the free version. This is the legend paid, uh, plan. So you need the highest tier. Now you can get this free for a month and I'll see about putting a link to how you can do that in the description as well. So at least you can try it out for a month at the paid legend level. But what it allows you to do is have a variant thumbnail that for a period of a couple of weeks or as long as you set it, it will every day switch from one thumbnail to another. Uh, so, you know, Monday will be this thumbnail, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you get the idea. And so over the course of a couple of weeks, it gets an idea of which thumbnails get better clicks. Uh, so that's really good. Why do you want to do this through TubeBuddy rather than yourself? Well, for a couple of reasons. For one, going back and forth over like two weeks, alternating days, it's a pretty good random sample size of your audience because you could change the thumbnail yourself, leave it for a week, change it to another one, uh, and try to compare those numbers. But there could be a lot going on in the various different time frames that you do that as well. Um, when you go through TubeBuddy and you're only changing the thumbnail rather than like title, description, and tags, it doesn't affect the momentum the video has. So you can actually do this on a video that is still performing well for you without risking it. I have a video on this channel about changing like the tag style description of videos that are older, uh, where I say if you're getting, um, you know, less than 100 views per month, if it has been six months since you've, you know, changed any of this metadata, then you can maybe go play with that. But that can interrupt the momentum of the video. A-B testing of thumbnails does not. It is safe to do. And so I do it. I've been talking about it in our Facebook group, actually. So if you're watching this and you're not a member, go check out Small YouTubers Boost on Facebook. And I'm actually posting about some of my A-B tests and what the results are. And, you know, increasing that CTR can be huge. Uh, you know, going from like a 8% CTR to a 10% CTR can be the difference from like 1,000 views to 10,000 views. And, and, and okay, you're probably doing your math in, the, in your head and you're like a 2% increase would only be a 2% increase. Not necessarily so. Um, because it will potentially drive more impressions. Impressions is where YouTube gives an audience member a chance to click on your video, maybe on the homepage, recommend it on the side panel, whatever. Um, and so when they present it, uh, whether or not somebody clicks on it, that's your click-through rate. I've got a video that explains that on this channel as well. And so if your CTR goes up, and you're getting into that double digit CTR, that 10% plus, that's when you're starting to hit that sweet spot. That's when YouTube, uh, the algorithm kind of takes notice and says, okay, wait a minute. Like 10% is really good because consider right now, um, on this page that I'm on right now, there are eight videos and I can only click on one of them at this moment in time. Uh, and so that means that seven of them are not gonna get my click. So a video getting a click 10% of the time uh, is huge. And so striving for that 10% CTR is great. And so when you hit that range, YouTube's like, okay, this people like this, let's show it to more people. So it's not just that you're getting a 2% increase of you know the click-through rate going from eight to 10%. It's also that your impressions are likely to increase at a higher CTR. So you're getting a higher percentage of a higher base number. I hopefully explain that math in a way that makes sense to you. Um, but that's where you start to get what is known as geometric growth. There's arithmetic growth, which is adding one to one to one to one. There's geometric growth, which is like building on itself. And then there's, of course, um, exponential growth, which is like, whew, you've gone viral. Uh, and that's that's a trick. So let's go from let's try to go from arithmetic to geometric growth, shall we? I don't know why I suddenly turned into a math nerd there, but there you have it. Clearly, I haven't done one of these in a while. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, it's interesting. And I would be curious to see what kind of CTRs you're getting on these, because I think that this uh, video here. Okay, this does look like to be a, everything about your MC business. Okay, it's not actually, it is a gaming video. 
do you see my point here? We're, we're looking at, like, honestly, honestly, I swear to God, looking at this thumbnail, I thought this was a PowerPoint you stole from your job. I thought this was something you saw at your day job, or it was like a, a report on the local news that happened to feature you or something that you stole and you uploaded without rights, and there was going to be a whole copyright thing, and then I hover my mouse over it, and I'm like, oh my God, it's a video game. So the thumbnail does not make it clear that it's a video game. Now, it's kind of cool because it is that sort of 80s video, like... In the 80s, they used to send out uh, uh, videos to, like, networks about new shows coming up, hoping to get the affiliates to pick it up. And there's actually a cool one for, like, Star Trek The Next Generation you can go watch on YouTube, uh, where they try to sell it. And so they're like, oh, this exciting new series starring Patrick Stewart and all this stuff. And they'll have a little picture in picture, and there'll be an interview, and then they'll zoom in, and then they'll show the interview or whatever. And so this looks like either a painful PowerPoint uh, from some local small business from, like, decades ago, or that kind of, like, an info entertainment in, infomercial kind of video or something uh and so i don't know how you like how, where the video where the views came from on this it would be very curious to know what your traffic sources are on this um but i think that that thumbnail just a little bit of work like you can keep that picture uh and that's fine just add a game logo on like the bottom left corner even just throwing like if that's gta or something like throw a gta logo in there and then make the font easier to read with some proper contrast um, I think that would be, that would be huge. Even if it is sort of in the style of like an 80s video or something, you can keep that, but make it a little bit more clear. Like this is about a video. Cause I just thought this was about like some business, uh, like, it, it, yeah, I don't know. So I, I think that can, that thumbnail can be, uh, improved quite a bit. So I'm thinking a couple of the key points that I'm really focusing on here is looking at those thumbnails. I really strongly recommend A-B testing so you can see what works and what doesn't. Look at your CTR, look what does well, look what doesn't. Copy and emulate and do add-ons of what works. Now don't copy in the sense of reusing your content. That'll get you demonetized. But PS3 in 2021, cool. It's 2022 now. Does it still work the same way it did in 2021? What's that experience like now? And since that's your most watched video, an update of that makes sense. It's sequel. That's a good strategy. The sequel strategy is really popular and very successful in a lot of cases. Um, so I think that's a good idea. And pumping up some of the thumbnails, trying to make it a little less generic. Like for example, um, the bottom row on my screen right now, these the, the two middle videos, it has that element, that transparent element that I think is you. It looks like you're laughing at something, but you're really kind of lost in the first one. Um, your chest is at the time code. That's probably fine, but on mobile, that time code gets bigger. Something to keep in mind. Uh, and so I would consider flipping you, and I know you can, and putting you under the San Andreas logo, move the, uh, the, the, the Grand Theft Auto logo up a little bit so you can appear underneath it and could, because the arch of San Andreas could frame you quite nicely and you know it would be like oh you're laughing at the girl you know sticking her tongue out or whatever uh, obviously in a sexually suggestive manner I've seen that image used a lot in thumbnails so how can you make it unique to your channel uh, that could be one way of doing it um, so I think that's where a lot of stuff like bulk up your description and look at trying to improve your thumbnails for CTR I think those are the two big things that will improve you for SEO and algorithmic growth uh, let's take a look here. Also, uh, right, I was talking about the homepage. <laughs> a little easily distracted. So you're going to want to add a popular video section so people don't have to go through a couple clicks to see what you're known for. Consider putting that at the top. I'm guessing this videos playlist is actually the uploads playlist relabeled. I'm not sure. Videos is a bad playlist name, I'm sorry to say. If it's like recently uploaded, whatever, okay, this is me going chronologically backwards in your videos. Cool. Now I know what this is, other than just videos. It's YouTube, everything is videos. Uh, so there's that. I would also consider looking at your playlists. Oh, please have playlists. Okay, good. You've got playlists. Excellent. And it does look like you play more than just uh, GTA. And so I think there's a good opportunity on your homepage to make that clear. And so I'm looking for um, playlists that have more than six videos in them. Trophy hunting guide. Uh, Lamar contact missions, maybe GTA news. That could be good if you're keeping up with that. Um, guides, something like that. The Walking Dead, Telltale. Uh, yeah, so you might want to consider some of your better performing ones. And so I think that on your homepage, you should have your, and, and in no particular order, I mean, think about how you would want to see it if you went to a channel, but you want your popular uploads. You want about three playlists that are curated, maybe specifically to a specific game, for example, um, something like that. Uh, and then you want to have like upload so people can find your most recent stuff. And then of course your shorts. I think that's a good way to do it. It looks like you're putting everything in playlists, which is fantastic. The playlists have some fairly decent names, but I have to ask. 
Yeah. I'm not seeing a description. Playlists need description uh, as well. And so for that, um, again, it doesn't have to be Shakespeare and it doesn't have to be great SEO, um, but it can be. Uh, there's there's this old joke that, what was it? An SEO expert walks into a pub, bar, watering hole. Yeah, the idea. Uh, and so if you can use synonyms and stuff like that in your description, keywords, fantastic. If not, don't stress over it too much. That with, with practice, you get better. Uh, but start off just out of the top of your head talking about like, okay, um, you know, the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC, um, you, you could talk about like, is it worth it? You could say like, oh, you know, they charge quite a bit for this DLC and not everybody gets it. But as I show you in these videos in this playlist, it's absolutely worth playing. So much fun, really funny story, whatever. Like, talk about something, uh, you know, on the theme of the overall playlist. And without even trying, you'll be hitting some of those keywords, you know, uh, talking about, oh, is the DLC worth it? In fact, there's a video suggestion for you as well. Um, in my travel space, people are asking, are things worth it all the time? I don't know if it's so much with gaming, but I think when it comes to DLC, that's a fair question. I think people probably search DLC packs to figure out if they want to spend the money on it. And so you could even do, you could have a whole series uh, of videos where, you know, is this DLC worth it? And you could talk about the good, the bad, and do you think it's worth the money? I think that could be not that you're necessarily struggling for content ideas, but that could have some. Uh, I don't know if that's something that is uh, is really popular. In fact, once again, keyword research really key. Let's use TubeBuddy once again. We'll do this in real time. Uh, is the Los Santos drug or DLC worth it? Let's take a look. It's okay. It's 51. There might be ways to uh, um, to phrase it better. Uh, DLC in GTA 5. Worth it. Okay. That hasn't changed. You could do a, a more general question. Is GTA 5 DLC worth it? Boom, I broke the needle. I broke the needle, 100%. Make this video as soon as you can, if this is something that you think you wanna make. Um, but look at that, search volume, super high, competition, middle of the road, okay? Um, so there you go, I broke the needle on that. Is GTA 5 DLC worth it? I think that could be a good playlist name, a good, a good recurring theme if you're looking for content ideas or if you just want to maybe experiment a little and that's sort of the thing is like trying different things within your niche it's not a bad idea uh, as long as you stay within the niche you're not gonna hurt your algorithmic growth too much you're not gonna hurt your algorithmic growth uh, so I think that's worth doing um, all right and I see you've got a community tab here let's see how you're using your community tab so this is interesting you have here, a lot of people are having trouble finding the, the gun van in GTA Online. Video topic, if you don't already have it, and here's your description for it. Or if you have a video where you talk about this, copy or use some of this, rephrase some of this, say things like this. Like, what I can say here is, like, you can write. You know, this this stuff looks like this could make good descriptions. And so I think they have uh, quite a bit of value in descriptions. Uh, the engagement you're getting here, one, three, you know, likes, a couple comments. Uh, you know, so this this stuff is, I think, more effective as a video description. I mean, if you can do both, that's even better. But that's something to think about. Oh, here. So I've been sick for the past couple of days. My voice sounds like it's been run over by a truck. So I'll not be posting your narrations, things like that. That's fine. What about your Patreon? Um, you were sick. Jeez, did you have COVID? Like, what was that like? What was that experience like? You know, did you play games when you were sick? What did you play? If you're if you're not feeling well, do you still play games? Do you play like a mobile game or like a little a little like a like a JRPG or something where you just keep clicking the button? <laughs> you know, uh, just you know you can still play games or like were you binging a TV show? Did you go watch like you know I don't know um, NYPD Blue or something on on Disney Plus or something like that kind of stuff could make some good Patreon content where it might not be strictly about gaming but it's about you and it's about stuff on the channels talking about your channels so people might have some interest in that and so there's some content ideas for Patreon. Okay, so here's a poll. Would you like me making a video that will explain good ways to combat griefers while selling goods in a public lobby? Well, let's see. <laughs> let's do it again. Now, this is part of my standard 
process. When I'm getting ready to make a video, before I even start the editing process, sometimes before I film, but generally just before I start editing, is I'll go in and I will search into Buddy Keyword Explorer to see what ways of phrasing things do better. And I will kind of keep a little notepad. We'll be like, okay, this got 47. Let's see if we can we can do this better. Um, uh, how about just combat griefers? 47. How about stop griefers? 47. How about stop griefers in GTA 5? <laughs> Ooh, this is a tough one. How to stop griefers? This is suggested. GTA 5. Boom. There we go. Didn't break the needle. How to stop griefers in GTA 5. Put it that way. A lot of that other stuff was scoring like 51, 47, uh, even though it could be the exact same video content, but having it with the right title can make all the difference in the world when it comes to search. And so how to stop griefers in GTA 5, boom, there's another video idea that you can go and, uh, and, and make like right away. <laughs> Uh, and so again, free to use that, but I think that that's good to be part of your process. Now, when I go in and I do this keyword research, part of what I do is those things that were coming up at like the lower scores, um, I keep those in my notepad file as well. And I use those sometimes in the tag section. And what I do is, is I sort them all in my little notepad file by which has the highest score. And so if I'm ever struggling to be like, oh, what do I put in the tags? Because it's kind of tedious work. TubeBuddy can help with that. But also my SEO research with Keyword Explorer informs that as well. And so I'll have that notepad file and I'll just keep posting things from the highest score to the lowest until I filled up the character limit. Uh, and that's one of the ways I can do that SEO. And that can be very effective because what if you've got like a, a song that scores like a 60, something that scores like 180 and a 62? Well, you got that 100, make that your title, but maybe try to have those others, like the 62 and the 80 or whatever, have those phrases in your description as well and in the tags. And so you're not necessarily putting all your eggs in that one keyword basket, but you are diversifying your investment of SEO that way. I think that would be a good idea. Um, and so since we're talking about tags, I'm going to go take a look at one of your videos and take a look using the Videolytics tool to see what kind of tag situation we got going on. Okay. So uh, what we have here on the right hand side is a TubeBuddy function. You get almost all of this with the free version. So if you don't have TubeBuddy, at least get the free version. If you can't afford, you know, a pro, a star or a legend, I understand. I appreciate that. You can get a free month with my link, but that notwithstanding, at least get the free version. So let's see what's going on here. Um, so your SEO score is actually pretty low. Uh, and yeah, that's because the like the keywords when it says tags it often means keywords so that's something to keep in mind it's not talking about like hashtags that's something else but the tags and title and description 10 out of 20 so what it's saying is is that in your description like a lot of the keywords up here aren't in here as well um like for example here's one um how about the worst way of doing first diamond casino heist that would be uh you know something you could put in there because uh, you could say, like, honestly, I think we've stumbled across the worst way of doing the, the Diamond Casino heist. Maybe. Uh, and then you put that phrase in the tags. And also, I'm just going to jump around here. Kind of see what I'm looking at here. Okay. So, let's talk a little bit about the other tags or keywords that you're using. GTA Online, that's good. Diamond Casino, yes. Friends. Friends isn't going to score well. Uh, it's one with smaller creators. One word keywords are not going to do well. Like friends, the TV show alone will completely push you out of that tag. You're not going to rank. You're not going to stand a chance on that one. You could have, you could call you could put GTA friends, GTA online with friends that a little better. Uh, but I still think the longer, more specific keyword is called long tail keywords. And that's how small YouTubers start to grow. What we have to do when we are small is compete against the long phrases where there's less competition. We're going to get that smaller market. And as they start to watch and subscribe and watch, you know, um, with greater frequency, our power grows. And so like people would say like, oh, Mr. Beast doesn't put tags on things or Mr. Beast only uses three tags or whatever. It's like, yeah, he has a massive audience. He could put up a 
a video of him scratching his nose walking to the bathroom with no title, no tags, he'd get a million views because he has an audience that has their notifications set to all. And there are people who, like, there are channels dedicated to talking about what Mr. Beast does. He's got so many amplifications that are happening outside of tags, he doesn't need it. But for the smaller creator, we have to swing at every pitch and take every advantage that we have. And yes, that includes tags. You know, when you're typing the tags into YouTube, it's like, they're not as important as they used to be. True. To YouTube and not as important. They are still important, just not as important. And it's only talking, YouTube's only talking about YouTube. It's not talking about Google. It's not talking about the search engines. The search engines still need this stuff. And so it helps when you put that in there. Uh, and so in a way, it's a competitive advantage. It's an opportunity, as much as I express some frustration, because people are just constantly giving bad advice about this. Um, but they're like, oh, you don't have to bother. It's like, yeah, well, you know what? I'm going to take every path to success I can find. Um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on myself every way I can think of and give me every chance to succeed. And so tags is one of those ways because of what I just outlined about search engines and everything else. Uh, and so going in and doing that and adding that in the description. And that's another thing too, is like, no one says the description's unimportant. No one at YouTube says that. Everyone says, agrees that the description is important. So it's not like you're having to do the work twice because hopefully what you're doing is the keywords that will be in the tags, you can work into sentences that flow naturally and read well in your description. That's when you start to have something that I call keyword alignment. So for example, if in the title you say, you know, the worst, it, the wor it includes the words, the worst way of doing Diamond Casino Heist. All those words are there. If all those words are also in the description and they appear as good tags that, are, that hopefully have good keyword scores uh, in the tags, then you start to have that alignment. And of course, for bonus points, if people are using those keywords in the comments and you use those keywords in the comment replies, it even further aligns where it's all about when it comes to search and SEO, it's all about confidence. You want the search engine or YouTube, which is the number two search engine in the world, to have confidence that it knows what your video is about. And so if you are consistently using the same phrase in the title, description, tags, comments, replies, then it's pretty confident that that's what your video is about. You know, uh, if you had a video about GTA 5 and all of your tags were about Bitcoin, then all of a sudden YouTube would be like, what the heck's going on? I don't know what this video is about. Is it about GTA 5 or is it about Bitcoin? I don't know. Like, if your title is all about GTA 5, your description is all about spending time with your family, and the tags are all about Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, you just you, you blow up the algorithm in the wrong way. You give it a migraine. <laughs> and so it's just like, I am, I am done with you. I, this guy doesn't know what he's about. This video doesn't know what it's about. Now, thankfully, you're not doing that. Don't get me wrong, but I'm saying that this highlights why these things are important. And so if you are consistent and also, the words you say count. <laughs> I mean, we've had speech recognition for the longest time. Uh, and so with YouTube, it's kind of next level. So even if you don't caption it, it kind of knows what you're saying. And also there are auto captions. If you, if you say it and add it to the captions and put it in the title and the description and the tags and the comments and the replies, hot damn. <laughs> YouTube is going to be so absolutely goddamn certain that your video is about that thing, that phrase, that it's going to be totally confident that it can show your video to people and be like, I know what that video is about. That's GTA 5. I'm not lying. You search GTA 5, I show you GTA 5, and I know with great confidence that's what this video is about. Then, if you have a good CTR and people click on it, you combine that with people like this video. People click on it, they watch it. Now, liking a video and clicking on it are not necessarily the same thing, but in the YouTube algorithm, they kind of are. I mean, you also want long watch time, things like that. So anticipated watch time is the key metric of all, but these are the components, the building blocks that go into it. Uh, and so like, again, let's just talk about these tags just a little bit more. I'm getting a little short on time, but I want to, I want to cover this, uh, having fun. Oh, for the love of God, man, you're a very nice person. And thank you for hiring me, but for the love of God, man, no, <laughs> uh, funny, does something funny happen? I guess it is. It's written a little funny. Um, but like even just funny GTA fail or something. Don't The word funny. <laughs> Do you have any idea how many people you're competing with? Let's find out. I gotta know. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like I'm dunking on you or anything, but I want I want this point to land. It's it's important. <laughs> because if you get this, it's the key to so many things. You're competing with 3.36 billion videos on that keyword. Are you going to go out and beat 3.36 billion people? The Rock couldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, sure, people are searching for it a lot. That's why it scores a 45, but still, we can do better. Um, 
Twitch Live. Now, I don't think that this should be here. Um, you may have recorded this on Twitch, but I don't see a Twitch interface. I don't see a chat. I don't see, you know, people. I don't see an overlay or anything. Uh, so the fact that this record was recorded on Twitch means nothing to the audience. Um, and and it, wasn't, it doesn't look like this was a live broadcast. This was a video you uploaded. So I would say that uh, Twitch Live, Twitch, and Live all should be gone. I don't think hashtags in... Um, uh, in tags uh, is a good idea. You want to put your hashtags in the description in the bottom line. You want to put three. Uh, and they should probably be some of the three best scoring tags if, if it's short enough. It's the longer tags, maybe not. Maybe it could be a component of it. Uh, like dim hashtag diamond casino heist at the bottom of this, you know. Um, whatever this is. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a missed opportunity because you've also got tons of room to add more stuff. Um, there's a comment here that you hearted, but you haven't pinned it, so I recommend pinning it. Uh, that gives you a tiny micro boost in the algorithm, and again, small YouTubers, we got to get every micro boost we can to start to grow the snowball. When your audience gets bigger and you reliably are getting tons of views, then maybe some of this stuff can fall by the wayside as you choose to focus on other things. But we ain't Mr. Beast yet, and we ain't gonna be there by pretending to be him or anybody else. I'm just picking on him because people mention him in our Facebook group all the time. Uh, so you're gonna want to pin that for a couple of reasons. For one, one, there is, as I mentioned, the algorithmic micro boost. Two, it sends a notification to that person, just like the heart did. And so that is good for a couple of reasons. One, it's another opportunity for them to come back to the video, get it another view, some more watch time, engage. And another reason is that it shows that you've valued their comment and you're putting it above all others. They don't necessarily need to know it's the only comment right now. Maybe more will come, maybe they won't. But that is how you start to form that connection with the audience. You know, I like Roberto Blake, and when I comment on one of his videos and I get that notification that he hearted it, that's a nice feeling. And so that adds to my appreciation of Roberto Blake, makes me more of a true fan of his. And if he were to one day pin one of my comments, I mean, and it's not because he has a big audience. That might be part of it, but that honestly is not my first reaction. That would come later. That would be like when my little Ferengi mind is like, oh, I can make some money off of this. Comes along later. First, it's going to be like, wow. If it happened, which it hasn't, but if it happened, I'd be like, wow. Like, he thought that what I had to say was valuable, and I highly value his opinion. And so if he were to do something like that, I'd be like, okay, like, that would mean a lot to me. It would validate my opinion. And that would make me feel that closer connection. I'm not talking the parasocial stuff where, you know, you fall in love with the creator, you never meet and stalk them. Not that. I'm talking respect. I'm talking appreciation. I'm talking shared values. These are the things that make people subscribe and like and comment more. Like, oh, I got a, I got a pinned comment on that video. That's the number one pinned comment. Because, like, you remember, you might not. I don't know how old you are. You said you started YouTube at 27, so you might remember this. Um where the comment section on YouTube was often, on, particularly on popular videos, filled with first. <laughs> first, first, first. And like five people thought they were first to comment uh, and stuff like that. And that was kind of a waste. It was a little silly game, whatever. Um, and so now we get to pin a comment. And so the first game is kind of over. The creator picks the winner. And so I got, I got picked the winner. I, like they thought my comment was the best. You know what? I, I, I can be funny. I can be funnier. I can, you know what? I can add more insight. I can, I, I bet I can get pinned again. So I'm going to maybe turn on notifications for that channel and make sure I comment early so that, uh, you know, uh, if you're the 500th person to comment, you're less likely to ever get read. So I might become notification squad because my comment got pinned. If you can see how the linkages are formed in this fictional story I'm creating in my head. But the point is, is that these are some of the interactions that add value in the eyes of YouTube. Now, how many people is that going to have that kind of a psychological effect on? I couldn't say. We'll never know. But the fact is also that YouTube believes it, and that's where you get the micro boost. And when you use every function available to you, that gives you a micro boost in the algorithm. YouTube has given you a whole bunch of tools and functions and abilities. And if you don't use them, then I would not be surprised if there was some version in the algorithm. I mean, it's all coding. It's not a person. Let's not personify things. But, you know, it's the equivalent of someone being like, hey, are you really into it? Like, we gave you 5,000 characters for the description. You just dropped some links in there. We gave you, you know, 500 characters, whatever it is, for the tags. You only put two lines in there. Uh, you know, you didn't pin any comments. So, I mean, maybe you're just doing it casually. Maybe you don't really want an audience. Maybe you're not engaging with your audience that much. You know, if we send the viewer to someone else who does all those things, they might get more out of it. 
I don't know. It's an assumption. And that's the thing. That's all an algorithm is. is it's a computer program making a bunch of assumptions. And we got to play to it. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, it's like, uh, what do they say in school? It's uh, it's teaching to the test. We got to write to the test. In our titles, our descriptions, our tags. Um, and so another thing I notice here uh, with the best practices from TubeBuddy, no chapters added. This video is 11 minutes long. And so uh, if you can add chapters to these longer videos, uh, then that would be great. In fact, let's go take a look at some of your videos. I'm curious what sort of uh, the frequent length of duration is on some of these videos. So three minutes, five, nine, 10, six, one, three, five, eight, nine, Honestly, anything more than like even three minutes, maybe. Um, definitely when you start getting into double digits and more, um, you're going to want to add chapters. And there's a couple of reasons to do this. And this will probably be my final point for this channel review. Uh, you want to add chapters because um, people uh, don't have a lot of time. Time is a precious commodity. I was doing a survey with a local university recently talking about the online creator community. Uh, and, and, they, and they were talking about like, what is it? The time economy, I think, or the attention economy, I think they phrased it. I thought that was an interesting phrase. Uh, and so holding somebody's attention and respecting their limited time and getting more of their very precious time is, is so key. And so one of the ways that we respect that is by having chapters. So if your video is going to cover a lot of different things or it's going to go through different, you know, areas or whatever, if you can break that down into chapters and they can go straight to what they want to watch, that's great. Now you might be thinking, but I wanted a 20 minute video. I can't tell you how many 20 minute videos I've clicked on that could have been 90 seconds. And that like frustrates me. And I definitely don't subscribe to those folks. Uh, sometimes I even go to the point of being like, don't recommend channel <laughs> when I'm on desktop. But um, like, let's say that you have to sit through a 20 minute spiel to get to the bloody point. If I started this off you know, and I just spend all my time talking about like, I don't know, Epidemic Sound, which is great and affiliate link down below and fantastic. And after 20 minutes, I'm like, now let's start this channel review. How many people would have stuck around? Not a lot. And if I had chapters, that would make that a little bit better where they could just click and go immediately to the thing that they want. And if the thing that they want is entertaining and gives value, then they may go back to the beginning and watch the whole thing. They may click on another one of your videos or they might just get what they want and move on. But either way, it's a lot better if they watched a three minute segment in the middle of your video that gave them what they want. It's a lot better than them clicking off after like 90 seconds at the beginning being like, I, this is gonna take me forever. I'm not watching this whole video. And so some people think that adding chapters could hurt them. It doesn't, it does not. It doesn't change user behavior in that way. It changes user behavior in terms of whether they stick to it. Uh, and so I think it's good to have chapters. Chapters also forces you once again to have a longer description that has more keywords because the titles, and like, here's how you make chapters if you don't know. All you have to do is put the time code and something next to it. Zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, space, and then, you know, like introduction and, you know, uh, cheats and ultimate fail, whatever it is. Uh, and, you know, I... On my primary channel, I'm pretty good about adding that to most of my videos. Uh, maybe not so much on some of like, like a live stream or like a long channel review. That can be a little tricky. I still sometimes do that though. Uh, so it, it has an SEO value. On top of that, search engines have gotten wise to chapters and not just Google, but like Bing and other things too. And so they go and they'll read those chapters and in search results, they will actually show the chapters. And if the chapter title lines up with the search, then you're more likely to be the result they show than something that doesn't have that or something that doesn't have chapters at all. Uh, it seems I've been noticing uh, that search engines have been favoring things with chapters. So that's another way you can get more traffic and more search through search engines is by having chapters. It can be tedious. I acknowledge that. One of the ways that I, if I'm feeling a little lazy or rushed or it's not obvious what the chapter should be, I'll go back to my Adobe Premiere project and I'll see where the main edits are in the primary source video. And I will see like, okay, did I change topic at this edit, at that edit, at that edit? If I did, boom, chapter, 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 write out in text, save it in the description, you're done. Uh, so there's a lot of value to that, both in terms of the psychology and the audience and like respecting your audience, the metadata and the algorithm and appearing well in search results. Those are three really strong reasons to add chapters to any of the longer videos so that people can get to what they want, or even just to kind of preview to see if it is what they want. Like I was saying, if you did magic tricks, which I think would be cool, I'm, I'm strongly in favor of that. You're probably cringing. I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's a stupid idea. I think it would be great if you did that and like, if there was a chapter for like magic trick one, magic trick three, card trick, 
uh, you know, hat trick, whatever, uh, or three trick, hat trick. It's a uh, hockey score three times. Anyway, <laughs> a little off topic. But if you uh, had those as chapters, and so I'm here, and I have limited time, just like everybody else on this planet, and I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I think this guy might do magic tricks. I wonder. So if I clicked on one of the longer videos, and I saw that there, or, or uh, you came up in search results, and I see a chapter that's like magic trick number one, coin trick, something like that, I'd click on it. And so maybe that takes me to a, a, a magic trick that will blow my mind. There's a guy I subscribe to. Uh, what's his name? Jack Rhodes. He does tricks. He's hilarious, and he does them well. He's fantastic. Uh, and he's in, he was in the Small YouTubers Boost group. I, hopefully he's still there. I haven't seen him in a little bit, but he was great. Um, and so, like, if it's something like that where you're super skilled but also really funny, uh, that's amazing. And I might just watch the whole video just to put the coin trick in context because, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you're, I don't know, it's a cutscene where somebody's flipping a coin while they're talking to you, and then you go and you do some crazy coin flipping trick. I don't know. If it's thematically tied in, then I might want to watch it in context. So I might go to the back of the video and watch the whole thing. Similarly, like I said, if I go and it's like comically bad, <laughs> I might want to watch it more. <laughs> I don't know. Um, if it's funny, uh, you know, skilled magic tricks, that's cool. I'll stick with it for a bit. I watch Jack Rose because he's also funny. So for example, if I, uh, you know, let's say there's that example. Let's say that it's a it's a thumbnail or it's a it's a cutscene in GTA where maybe a guy's flipping a coin while he's talking to you, right? And you're like, all right, I'm gonna do this awesome magic trick, right? And then you like, I don't know, flip a coin, but then a whole bunch of coins fall on you or something. And you're like, I don't know where my damn coin is. And then it just cuts back to the game or something. Use that if you think it'll work. Um, but even something like that, I'd be like, okay, that's pretty funny. I want to I want to see what the other jokes are. I want to like maybe I'll go click on one other chapter. They'll show me one other joke and be like, okay, that's funny too. That's too. Forget it. I'm gonna go back to the beginning and watch it all. And now I'm binging your channel. Uh, and now you're getting the views and the likes and the comments and the watch time subscriber. Uh, and then, you know, maybe one day true fan. Uh, so those are just some initial thoughts. I hope you found this particularly useful. Uh, do check out some of the other videos we've got on this channel if you haven't already. We've got videos on how to get subscribers. Uh, you know, we've got a video on your first thousand. You probably don't need it because you've already got a thousand, but it's also your second thousand. Uh, we've got videos on how to get, um, you know, a hundred in a month or ten per day, depending on how much time and money you're willing to invest in your channel. Uh, we've got a video on staying motivated uh, to continue to create for your channel. Uh, we've got videos on how to get more views uh, and a whole bunch of other uh, things like TubeBuddy tools. So strongly recommend subscribing, checking out the other videos in the channel. And again, if anybody watching is interested in getting a channel review like this, send me a private message on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, something like that. Basically, it's the cost of two Big Mac meals. You know, buy me and my kid lunch at, at, at the cheapest fast food place, the equivalent of that paid by P PayPal, and then you get a nice video that lasts about an hour. It's posted on our channel. You have a link to your channel in the description, the end cards, and an info card. And um, then you can go back and watch as many times as you need to. And one thing that I would recommend for anyone who has gotten a review, whether you're out of the hat gaming or Sister Tries It or any of the others that we've done, Harrison, for example, um, is come back. After 3, 6, 12, 24 months, 36 months, whatever, and rewatch it to see a couple of things. One, how far you've come, because I know that if you follow any of this stuff, you're going to do well. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential for this channel, uh, particularly if you're a magician. <laughs> I'm a little hung up on that. I just really want to watch magic tricks now. Um, but I think you've got a lot of opportunity here and, and some competitive advantage that you can leverage a bit better than you have been. And so I think you, you'll, you'll come back and be like, oh yeah, that was back when I only had that many views or subscribers or the videos were struggling, whatever it is. And I'm doing so much better now. But also to rewatch it, check the chapters if I've added them, I probably will. Um, to be like, oh wait, what was it about the channel description? Maybe I need to update that. Or, you know, have I been following some of the tips about the thumbnails or some of the other stuff? And so there is so much you have to remember about YouTube that it's worth reviewing. So thanks for watching.